in May of 2011, I had a chance to visit the South Louisiana coastline, and it was actually the first time I had visited that area, and I was so taken with what I saw down there, with the color, the light, the textures, the patterns, the lines, the shapes, and the forms, that it truly influenced me as an artist and it had a huge impact on what I wanted to say as an artist. I've always used water as my imagery uh, in my stained glass work and seeing the waters in the South Louisiana area made me pinpoint even more what I wanted to say about, and about what I saw down there and what I felt. Um, I teach graphics and color theory and um, I was seeing all the things I teach my students and it was kind of a connect the dots uh, time for me when I visited the coastline. I subsequently went back four different times, one during each season of the year to see how things changed down there, to see how the light changed and how the colors changed and the textures um, of each season. And I went back again in May of this year to photograph again. Um, I ended up doing a painting series last year after I visited the South Louisiana coast. And Baton Rouge Gallery had asked me to do a glass show with two other glass artists and this this is the glass show that they had asked me to participate in and they asked me about a year and a half ago to do this and I said oh that sounds great but then when I visited the South Louisiana, Louisiana coastline I decided I wanted to do paintings and not do glass in um, my work but I knew I still had this show coming up so it took me a while to wrap my mind around the fact that I was going to do glass for this show and not paintings. Um, usually my imagery in my stained glass is more abstracted, but I could not get the images of the South Louisiana coastline out of my mind. So I kept struggling trying to figure out how I'm going to represent what I saw in glass and not in painting, which I um, really wanted to do paintings, but I knew I needed to do this in glass. So I had to simplify and, and really streamline my vision to do this show in glass because glass is a medium where you can't just necessarily do, um, I guess, photorealistic work, unless you just do a painting on glass, which I did not want to do. Gla my glass work is very linear, it's very filled with patterns and forms, and so um, I finally came up with some solutions to the um, challenge. Um, Basically how I started this series was that I took some pieces of glass and laid them on a light table just to look at shapes. Um, this is like one of the first pieces of glass that I laid out on the light table because I said I want to represent the marshes and um, I knew I wanted the cool greens and blues combined with the golden um, colors of the marsh grasses. So that was my starting point. After that, I started to put some line work to the glass that I laid on a light table. After that, I did a um, just a pen and ink drawing of what I wanted my stained glass window to look like, sort of loosely. Then I started to add colors, just maybe looking at warms and cools of the um, area. And then I um, added some more, I laid out more pieces of glass on the light table. And that was how I first decided to begin this series. And this is the first piece that I did in the series. It's called Marsh Grass or marsh grasses. 
my friend Van emailed me when she saw um, the invitation because this is the piece on the invitation and she said I like your marsh glass and I thought well maybe I should have called my show marsh glass but I didn't think of that at the time so anyway um, I struggled through this piece um, because I still was saying I really want to do paintings but um, I finally resolved myself to the fact that I was going to do this in glass. So I started doing sketches in my sketchbook, lots of different sketches, line drawings, um, the linear areas of the coastline that I um, had observed, and adding a little bit of color, maybe color to show where warm areas and cool areas would be. Um, added some other colors to some of these sketches. They're very loose, loose sketches. But that was my starting point for this series. Okay. This piece is called Sunset on the Black Mangroves. And I had a chance to visit some of the islands where black mangroves are. And I didn't realize um, a year ago when I saw black mangroves how tiny they were in, on the Louisiana coastline. I've seen photographs them photographs of them in Florida and they're these big things with these rugged looking root systems but the ones I've seen on the Louisiana coastline are kind of short pelicans nest in them and they have an interesting um, branch system it's almost like an umbrella type branch and root system that comes out from a central um, stalk or bark and I noticed that um, at sunrise and sunset, there's like a pink or an orange cast on everything. And I thought it was really beautiful because these black mangrove trees um, have kind of a silvery color to their bark when they're, when they're dying. And it's really beautiful when the sun is setting or rising and shining on them because they take on this really gorgeous cast. Um, some of the leaves of the black mangroves are a yellowish color and um, it's just something that another image that I couldn't stop thinking about. And then when I visited Grand Isle, um, in one of the lagoon areas there, there were a few spoonbills and I thought what beautiful birds. Um, they're beautiful, yet they're awkward looking and they're funny looking, but they're just so graceful. And I knew that I wanted to do a spoonbill in glass, but I had to really wrap my mind around how I could simplify it enough that I could express it in glass. And um, I did a quick sketch and um, realized that this is basically what I wanted to do in glass. Um, it was not a very detailed sketch, but I said I don't want it to be too, too complicated. So, anyway, that is what my spoonbill ended up being. Um, this piece is called Sunrise on the Pier, and um, I took a lot of photographs of water when I was down there. Um, the tide coming in and going out of water patterns, um, the wake of boats, um, kind of conflicting with the pattern of the water um, as it was lapping against the shores. And um, I just am fascinated by water, water patterns. I also flew over uh, Wine Island in January to photograph what that island looked like and to, to see the patterns of the water lapping against the shore. Wine Island has not much left of it anymore and um, when we flew over you could see the outline of it where the waves were defining it but there was very little of the island left and when we visited it in um, May of this year there's basically no vegetation on that island anymore. There were lots of birds on it but um, it was kind of sad how much of it has disappeared. So anyway, I, wanted, I knew I wanted to use some wave patterns, some water patterns in some of the pieces I did. 
And again, I did make my pier red because at sunrise, everything takes on that warm glow. And this piece, um, Tides of Change, is also about the water patterns that I um, noticed, experienced. And it also is about the fact that things on the South Louisiana coast are changing quickly. And um, I photographed a lot of things at dusk and at dawn. And I really love the colors uh, at that time of day. Um, in the early morning, you'll see the fishermen going out at sunrise to start fishing. You'll see the pelicans fishing for their morning breakfast. And just fascinating things. You'll see the sun slowly sneaking up, but the moon's still out. So this piece is about the tides of change, and it is a sunrise piece. I've always used water as one of my images when I do stained glass because stained glass or glass is a fluid medium. It is considered a liquid and um, I feel like glass expresses that flowing feel of water. Water is such a universal archetypal symbol and I've always thought that glass was a perfect medium to express that idea, that um, concept. The glass I use, some of it is from France, um, such as in this piece. This is um, St. Just glass, these pieces. This glass is made in the United States, and the glass across the top is all made in Germany. But there is a characteristic of mouth-blown glass that I really love, and that's why I always use mouth-blown glass, and it is that it has irregularities all in it, sort of like linen or handmade fabrics. Um, there are irregularities like bubbles, uh, streaks, all sorts of things in handmade glass. This piece is called Squawk and I had to do it because we visited several of the islands where there were nothing, there were just birds on the islands and it was constant squawking of birds and um, I wanted to simplify this whole birdness concept down to the lowest common denominator I could, and I felt like the bird beaks were the essence of the birds for me. And um, I was totally fascinated by the flocks of birds on Raccoon Island. Um, we saw sh shorebirds as well as the pelicans nesting. There were little baby pelicans on their nests and it was so hot when we went and they were just panting in the sun. But um, it was a really moving experience to see the magnitude of all the birds that we saw on that island. And this last piece is called Cocodry Sunrise. And Cocodry is where I start out from um, when I do my filming um, and photography. Um, I photographed lots and lots of sunrises in Cocodry and the sky is usually a brilliant orange when the sun is coming up. And it just um, is such a spiritual thing for me that I had to do a piece called Cocodry Sunrise. And the thing I want to end with is a passage I wrote last year about my thoughts on the um, Louisiana coastline. The rugged beauty of places uninhabited by humans, the quiet spirituality of a sunrise, the curious squawkings of birds, the trees standing as skeletons in the harsh sun, the water gently cradling an island, one day to tuck it away to an eternal rest, the marsh grasses hiding ancient secrets, the timeless ebb and flow of cultures, the moonlight signaling an end to the day, faint whispers from the winds. <laughs>